Yep. So how did um, how did you get cast in Friday the Thirteenth? Well, you know, a long time ago, it's like 1970-something or other, there was a guy named Sean Cunningham. And uh, have you noticed there's all these movies now that are out about kids who play soccer? Have you noticed this? They're like, yes. They're coming out with all these movies like Kids Who Play Soccer, a TV series about kids who play soccer. Well, I mean, to Sean's credit, he thought of that way back when, okay? And he had this idea to do a TV series, an after-school special kind of thing about a bunch of kids who play soccer, believe it or not. That's what he came up with after Last House on the Left. Uh, I don't know how, but ultimately, that wasn't going in that direction of uh, success because maybe soccer was a little, it hadn't really reached the people yet. Nobody was a soccer mom yet, so it was, he, he was out in Connecticut, so maybe there's a lot of people playing soccer there, but anyway, it didn't pan out so well, and he started to get a little bit concerned about financing. So he said, hmm, this very successful movie called Halloween that came out, it went right up to the top there, it did really well. Maybe I'm going to do a horror movie, thought Sean, in order to get the funding together for this little comedy about kids who play soccer. And so he came up with this title, Friday the 13th, okay? So he just put that in Billboard magazine, just like that, Friday the 13th, put it out, no script, no nothing. And um, he got some reactions, you know, he got some people together, things started happening. So uh, he got a great cast of people together and the way that I got in it was because I had been in the movie about the kids who play soccer. And the way I got in that is that I snuck into an audition in the YMCA in my town in Connecticut. So never let anybody tell you that you can't sneak in and, <laughs> and still get ahead because I grabbed the script and I got an 80 line role in that movie. And they said, what, what are you doing here? After they had already cast me, they were like, where are you from? I was like, oh, well, I just snuck in. And they thought that was cool. So when they went to do Friday the 13th, they knew they needed a little boy in the, to drown at first. At first, the, the Mongol, the, um, pardon me, Jason was going to drown, and that was it. There was no ending scene where he comes up out of the water at the end. It was just Jason drowns and, you know, well, I don't want to spoil the movie. Right. But. I mean, Sean, Sean has an exploitation background, and so first he dabbled in sexploitation, then, of course, the huge success of Last House on the Left, and The Bad News Bears was a hit film, and so he thought that this soccer idea was really the financial way to go. That's exactly right. He was ahead of his time. It didn't work at the he time. He did a baseball He one. did. He made Here Come the Tigers, which Fred Lincoln from Last House is in. But he, um, he, um, Wanted to make a slasher film that he could cash in on. The title Friday the 13th was the first thing that came to mind, but Carrie was such a hit. And yep. at the end of Carrie, everyone knows Carrie has the shock surprise ending. And he wanted to replicate that in Friday the 13th. That's true. Hence, well, Young Jason. Yes. Well, let me, let me, um, I don't want to get ahead of, of myself. So that's the, the, the whole way that I got lucky enough to stumble into the whole thing. He just called me up. They were going to use his kid and his wife said no they didn't want no to do it so they said oh uh what about that guy ari yeah he's 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 you know he's game he'll probably do it call him you know so i answer the phone and he's like can you swim i'm like yeah he's like come down you got the part that's it you know and that that's how i stumbled into it and what were the makeups like i mean it's a pretty it's a pretty sophisticated makeup that you had to wear at a young age. Well, the first thing they did was they put me right into the uh, hands of Tom Savini. So here I'm like 13 years old. It's like, you know, uh, and they brought me to this, uh, you know, like their wizard's lair where they're making all the cool little, uh, you know, special effects. Everywhere you look, there's a different special effect being made, you know, a severed head here, you know, a chopped off hand there. He had a pet chinchilla he kept in there. And they were always like sword fighting, like constantly. And like, um, 
So then they, they put me in the chair, they got me ready for the thing, they had my head all wrapped in this plaster, and he proceeded to put on Jim Morrison and the doors. People are strange <laughs> when you're a stranger. So it's like, that was like my, you know, experience. And I saw Tom and his assistant at that time, Tasso Stavrakos, as being incredibly dynamic, creative individuals who I thought like, wow, you know, to grow up and be able to do something fun and creative, you know, that was a big inspiration to me. So it took about four weeks to create the first prosthetic, which was just the one where it's all clean, because he just drowns. Now, to get back to the thing, Sean asked them to create the final scene. And taking inspiration, you're very knowledgeable about film. Um, uh, yes, thank you. <laughs> but, but taking inspiration from Carrie, as well as Jaws, of course. Because Jaws has just been a big hit. So Jason is kind of like Jaws in the woods, you know, the girls in the boat, Jason comes up, you know, it's, it's, it's similar to that. So um, ultimately, I guess it took, four, also it took four hours to apply each time we went to the set. And um, not to get off track, but horror aficionados, often credit Black Christmas or Halloween as really spearheading the contemporary slasher film, but boy, Friday the 13th, when you look back on it, had much more of an influence. You saw so many, specifically, summer camp slashers after Friday the 13th. It opened the door. It exploded. It, 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 exploded. it was a huge hit, and you saw specifically summer camp slasher films being made, and no, it wasn't the well, first. Well, it wasn't that it was a hit. It was an international hit. A it global a smash hit everywhere. everywhere. Um, so what, what was the atmosphere like on the set? You're a young kid, you have this makeup on, you're flailing around in the water, what was the atmosphere like? Oh, it was a blast. I mean, it was like uh, 1980s, you know, everybody was just kind of wild. Uh, it was really 79, and, you know, people were, uh, these were all actors who basically came from New York, and there's all crew people from New York, and we were just, it was kind of wild on the set, you know? People were staying up late and, you know, uh, cavorting, and uh, there was much cavorting going on, and I was like, um, "Were you too young to cavort?" I was or did too you get young to cavort. To cavort. I didn't. Well, I got to observe cavortation. <laughs> you, you learned the finer arts of cavorting. At certain points, they were like, "Arnie, go go back into the cabin." Sir, but, um, you know. But either way, it was, it was a blast, and you know, it was a lot of fun because, um, you know, here all these people who lived in the city were getting to spend all the time in the summer camp, making a movie and having a good time on the set, and it was fun. Adrian King didn't want to answer this when I spoke to her, which is understandable, but how do you feel and how do you think some of your cohorts might feel about Kevin Bacon's success? I mean, he wasn't first billed in the movie, certainly. There were other young actors, and he's the one who ended up being a superstar. What are your feelings about that? Oh, well, Kevin's success is because he's, he's a great actor. I mean, you know, he's, he's really good at what he does. I mean, every time I see him in a movie, I'm like, Good, you know, good job, dude. He was in like JFK. I mean, it was awesome. But um, uh, I can tell you two funny stories about him. Sure. And so we um, like, I would sit there and like look into the water. You know, I was a kid. You know, I was like trying to channel Jason. You know, I'm like looking into the water. What would it be like to live underwater for like 11 years? And I was like. I'm Gollum, you know, I'm like Swamp Thing, I'm like Creature from the Black Lagoon. And then Kevin Bacon comes over, he's like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm getting into character, man. <laughs> and he did what you guys just did, he laughed his ass off. So he, started, he calls over Harry Crosby, and he, he calls over Harry Crosby, he goes, hey, tell him what you just told me, man. You know, so they were having fun with that. And when I first got to Sean's office, they actually handed me Kevin's script by accident, and it says the, the, the counselor goes off to make out with his girlfriend in the woods, and I was like 13. That was a happy moment for you. Yeah, I was like, wow! <laughs> <laughs> Two things I've never done before. But, um, <laughs> I would like to say I'm sure Ari's much more adapted to convert, converting these days, so if you know, yes. any single one you want to stop by his table. <laughs> Anyway, but, um, the, um, yeah, it was, no, but then Sean Cunningham walked in, and he goes, throw you up. <laughs> he goes, he goes, that's not, that's not for you, that's Kevin Bacon's script, you're too young for that. 
you're going to be the monster. I was like, oh, okay, cool. <laughs> you said there were two Kevin Bacon stories. That would be one. No, those were two. Oh, those were two. Man. I guess, <laughs> I, guess I, I, guess I faded there for a moment. 